Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the new M500 from FS Reborn. This is going to be more of a first look at the aircraft slash review. I've got only about enough time in it to set up my Honeycomb Bravo and Alpha. There were a couple bugs that I did notice throughout my testing, so I'm going to go over all of that and more coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we spawn into the sim, I just wanted to show all the liveries that are available for the M500. There is one livery that I did download specifically from flightsim.to. That is right here. I'm not going to go over this livery in this video, but I will post a link for this down in the description. Before we jump into the aircraft, I just want to give you a little backstory of the M500. The M500 is a member of the M class of aircraft, which is an extension of Piper's successful PA-46 family. The M500 measures 29 feet, 7 inches in length, and features a low main wing with a span of 43 feet, retractable tricycle undercarriage, and a standard tail unit. It has an advanced cockpit based on the Garmin G1000 NXI. This aircraft is powered by a 500 horsepower Pratt & Whitney four-blade reversible full feathering constant speed propeller say that fast five times oh and by the way if you enjoyed today's content go down below hit that subscribe tick on that little bell and smash that thumbs up button it is greatly appreciated let's take a look at some of the cool little bells and whistles that we have on the outside i also want to take a look at some of the texturing that's done on this because it really is phenomenal. There's a couple spots that I did notice here, but taking a look at these, look at the light fixture on the wing. This, you can, you can, look at this. You can see every little LED that is on that light fixture, and it really looks like it's got glass on it. Wow, look at the pulse lights here on the outside. I Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section, too. Wow, you can see all the little scrapes and cuts on the windshield. Let's go underneath the plane here and see what a lot of developers kind of skimp out on because nobody thinks we're going to take a look under here. All right, looks pretty plain to me. But maybe that's how it is on the real aircraft, so... But as far as the actual landing gear itself, just take a look at the detail that has been put into the tire and the rim... The lug nuts here, it is fantastic. Look at that, Bridgestone tires. Okay, another thing I really wanted to, to show off here was the light fixture on the front. Look at this. I mean, that looks amazing. Now, the only thing that I did find a little bit wonky here is you have a little bit of a texturing issue here. You can kind of see the polygons here at the top where the landing gear closes. I'm just nitpicking here. I'm not, there's no, no, uh, no hard feelings. <laughs> Trust me, they did a, a fantastic job. Not to mention this aircraft is almost study level. Well, should I say study level? In my opinion, you can see all of the engine covers that they've added on this as well. The other really neat thing that I like is the propeller covers that they add here. That is just, I think that is such a cool touch. All right, let's take a look at the rear landing gear and the chocks that they've implemented. Even the chocks look, wow. I'm sorry if this might be boring to some people. But I always like to keep my audience riveted. I did also watch a one hour video that the developer had on a stream about this aircraft. And the entire aircraft was modeled after the real world uh, M500. So all the little nuances that come with it, you get it right here. Now, one thing that the developer did talk about in that live stream was the people for the aircraft. At this moment, there are no people that are going to show up inside the aircraft. And that's one thing to note here. And the reason why he said that was because he's so... He gets a little OCD about things, and he didn't want to go down that rabbit hole and invest a lot of time into perfecting the characters. Uh, I think he's waiting for 2024 to come out, 
Another cool little trinket that they added here was the red carpet for all of your passengers that are going to be boarding the aircraft. So I, I just really think that's cool. Let's get inside here and take a look at some of the interior features. Taking a look around in the main cabin here, uh, I did notice that all of the window shades you can put up and down. There is also a little table here that's going to pop out. This is also going to be used for serving food and beverages during your flight. I'll go over that um, a little bit later. Over here, we have little lights that are going to populate. Now, I don't have any power to the aircraft here, so the lights are not going to come on. On the other side of the aircraft, this is all the same. All the window shades go up and down. The back door here is also activated by the tablet that comes in the aircraft. I know everybody's waiting to see the cockpit, so let's get up front and take a look at what we have here. All right, so let's start off on the left-hand side of the cockpit area, and we have this awesome tablet over here, and there was a lot of attention to detail added into this. We are going to get into this here in just a second because there's so many neat things that you can do here. Before we go over that, I just want to go over some information about the cockpit. All of the breakers that are presented here in the cockpit area do work, um, and they are tied to a specific electrical system. Now, when you first download this aircraft, you're going to be presented with a really cool welcome, and they're also going to go through how you are going to be using the aircraft. So if you want this thing to be as realistic as possible, you're going to get it. As you can see, all the breakers do pop. Now, one thing that I'm not sure of if this is true in the actual aircraft or not. Most of these GA aircraft that I've been in, at least in a simulator, when you pop out one of the breakers, you'll see either a little white bar or a red bar or something on the breaker. And that will help you know that you have a breaker popped. And unfortunately, we don't have that here. So that might be nitpicking. I'm not sure if that is correct in the real aircraft, but that's what we got here. All the armrests up front do work. Now, one of the things down below on the lower pedestal, none of the buttons down here will function. So maybe they will allow us to use this in the future. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious about how to operate the G1000 NXI, I have just started the G1000 series. I will also link that down below in the description. Let's take a look at the throttle quadrant real quick because there's a couple things I want to go over here with you. Now, one thing to note, over here on the left-hand side, this manual override does not function. As I increase the throttle here, you will notice that we have a beta range now that is implemented in this aircraft. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft Flight Simulator has not implemented the beta range for your aircraft as of yet. So there is a workaround so that you can use the beta range in this aircraft without having to use your mouse and pull it down. So for those of you who are on hardware-based systems and are using a Bravo or something like that, you could use SPAD.next to program this. And what I did was set this as a custom axis for the throttle one. And instead of it being a negative 16,383 to positive 16,383, make it negative 1680 and positive 16,383. And that will allow you to use beta range so for those of you who are using hardware and you are using the Microsoft Flight Simulator bindings, FS Reborn did post a video on how to implement beta. I'll post a link down below for that as well. On the right hand side, this is our condition lever, but in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is actually just going to be mapped to your mixture axis and we do not have to use any condition lever bindings in Microsoft Flight Sim. If you just glance up to the overhead panel, you will see all of the battery, avionics, generator switches, start switches, and fuel pumps over on the left-hand side. The center of the overhead is going to be all of our lighting controls. So if we want to dim any of the controls, our dome lights, or switch between day and night lights, this is where you'll find those. On the right-hand side of the overhead panel, We'll have all of our anti-ice for the windshield, pedo heat, stall heat, and our surface de-ice at the top. On the bottom row of switches will be all of our lights for the aircraft. Now with the brief overview of the cockpit done, let's jump down to the EFB tablet and take a look here. One thing that I really wish they would have implemented here, and maybe they have, I just haven't found it yet, is a way to remove the tablet completely. 
and no matter where I've clicked, I am not able to get this tablet to go away. If someone knows that if this is available, please let me know down below in the comments section. This would be a very big help so that we can see all of the breakers on this side of the aircraft. So like I said, when you first download the aircraft, it's going to go through a kind of a questionnaire as to how you're going to be setting up the aircraft. If you want to kind of customize things to your liking, the first thing that I would recommend to do is to head over to the settings cog on the lower right hand corner of the EFB tablet. Once you're in this menu, here's where we can set our Navigraph or SimBrief username. Now this also has full SimBrief implementation to the aircraft. I'll show you that in just a second. But before you can do that, you need to set up your username. You can also allow the tablet to send the SimBrief plan directly to your G1000, so you don't have to enter any of that information, other than your procedures, of course. Below this, we have aircraft wear and tear speed adjustments. For those of you who are using all realistic settings, you want to be able to experience all the different nuances that an M500 pilot would. By keeping all of the wear and tear speed on one time, it's really going to take a long period of time for you to experience any kind of wear or failure on the aircraft. So what I prefer to do is to up all of my wear and tear speed anywhere between five and eight times, and that'll give us a really good feel of all the different things that could go wrong during your flights in the short amount of time that we fly these aircraft. If we head over to the middle of the tablet, here we have our action camera section. What the action camera will do, it will move the camera to whatever is happening at the moment. So for instance, if we turn on the engine startup action camera, when we start the engine, it's going to put the camera outside so you can see the propeller turning. And I did find a little issue with it. Um, it kept jumping back in and out of the aircraft, so I'm not sure if that was me or if that's just a little bug. So today I am going to turn these on so you can see exactly what is going to happen here once I activate each of these. There you go. See, it just went outside for some reason. Um, I didn't put the door down. It just was down. So I, like I said, these are some bugs that I've seen. All right. Now over here on the left hand side, this is where we can change all of our units of measure. Now remember I said earlier, this is kind of similar to GSX. We have passenger vehicles, we have fueling trucks. There is, there's some things that are going to be happening on the outside of the aircraft. So here's one thing that we do have the ability to change, and that is the type of vehicle that our passengers are brought to our aircraft in. If you want to preview this, you can just hit the preview button, but I'm not going to do that right now because we're going to show you what the entire process is going to look like, and I've got some information to go through there as well. The next tab over on the bottom is the FAQ tab. And this will give us some really good information or questions. So if you're having any issues with it or you can't start. The next tab over on the bottom is the realism tab. Now, again, all of this is going to be set when you initially load or install this aircraft in your PC. If you want to go in here and manually change these, we do have that option as well. So if you don't want to have to deal with all that realism stuff, you can turn all of that off and just enjoy the beautiful aircraft. For those of you like me, I love all the little nuances. I love checking my gauges. I really like all that stuff. So here's where we can make sure that we have to do that. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Now, in the maintenance area, this is going to be all the different things of the aircraft that we can maintain within the sim. Now, by maintaining, we can either perform maintenance on a particular item we can add or top off fluids. We can even change air pressure. To select any of our systems, we're just gonna go over any of the blue dots and then click on it with our mouse. At the very top of the tablet, it will give us some information about the item in which we're servicing. So in this instance, it gives us all the different lights for the aircraft, as well as how many hours that they're expected to live for before we need to either replace them or yeah, I think we can't do anything other than replace the lights. So let's go down to the front tires here. And here you can see all the different air pressures that we have in the tires, as well as the tire health. Again, at the very top of the tablet, it will give us some information about tire management, when tires need to be replaced, 
as well as recommended tire pressure for front and rear tires of the aircraft. Now, this is going to be really, really important for those of you who have realism on, because if your tires are overinflated and you hit the ground too hard, you will have a tire blow out on you. The next tab over is going to be the cabin comfort tab. And here's where we're going to be able to cater to all the guests that we're going to have on board the aircraft. Now, just keep in mind that when the guests do board the aircraft, you will not see any people in the back but you will have a passenger status on the monitor here, which I will get into in just a little bit once we get some passengers on board. The next tab over is the ground ops menu. This is where most of our on ground operations are gonna take place, other than our maintenance, of course. So here's where we can add passengers, take away passengers, we can add cargo, fuel, we can even open and close the cabin door. And here is where we're also going to turn on or turn off all the little trinkets that you see on the outside, like the pedo covers, propeller covers, yada, yada, yada. At the very bottom right, we have two tabs, load instant and load real time. Keep in mind here that if you choose load real time, it is real time. So if we go outside right now, you can see that we're pretty close to the airport FBO. So it's not going to take too long for passengers or fuel to get here. If you are in a very, very large airport, it could take up to 20 minutes for a fuel truck to get to your aircraft. Oh, no. Let's go through here real quick and just set some things up. So now once we have all that done, let's go ahead and call for the GPU and then connect it to the aircraft. And we have all the action cameras on right now, so I'll show you what's going to happen. Well, I guess, uh, now I thought that when you click on the GPU, it should have went to the outside of the aircraft, but let's see if it does that for connect. There we go. Now you can see the little door opening on the aircraft and the GPU connection. You can even see the GPU vibrating here as it's running. So really cool effects here. As soon as that GPU connects, it will send power to your main uh, GPS screen. And also, by the way, the G1000 has been completely customized to match exactly the M500. So there's been a lot of work done in this entire aircraft. It, it really is cool. What we need to do now is hit the load real time button and you'll see what happens. Now, when you click on this, this will not send you outside the aircraft. So I'm going to manually Put the camera outside so you can see what is going to happen. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. You will have some information here of the status as to what's happening. So as you see here, right now they are calling or requesting a fuel truck to come to the aircraft. Once this starts, it will give you an ETA of how long it's going to take for them to get to the aircraft. But you can also skip this and just go and complete the entire process if you want. So I really like that feature. If you don't want to wait 25 minutes for a fuel truck to get to, you don't have to. So let's go outside real quick and see where this guy's coming from. Now, the other thing that people are probably going to ask me about with the fuel trucks and the passenger delivery for this aircraft, and that is how this is going to be implemented in third-party sceneries or third-party airports. The way that this system works is the fuel truck and the passenger vehicles are going to be following any of the taxiways. So for any third-party airports or scenery, this will work just fine according to the developer. We can see the fuel truck coming. There he is right down there. All right, so let's hop back in here and take off the pedo, the propeller covers, and we'll leave the security cones and chocks. Over here, it looks like we have 43 seconds. Now, I would normally speed all this up, but I really want everybody to get a feeling just how simulated this is. So I'm not going to skip through any of this. There he is. Wow, he drove all the way out on the runway to get here. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Instead of just coming down the taxiway here. But like I said, he might have to make his round to get here. He's probably going to go down and turn in this taxiway. He's got to. So let's see. 
Yep, he's turning right on the taxi line. Or just over the taxi line. And here he comes. It, look at the cones. Even look at the dirt that is on these cones. That is that's just crazy. I, the level of detail that they've put into this. In my opinion, this and the Comanche and the TBM-850 are my top three aircraft right now in the sim. Let me know what yours are down below in the comments. All right, so as he kind of gets settled here with the fuel truck, uh, what you will notice is he's going to go to each wing individually and start either fueling or defueling the aircraft. So once he gets in place here, you'll see that line populate here. I think he's going to go to the left first. Let's see. All right, so on the tablet here, we can see he's arriving. Yeah, just look at the dirt on the cones here. That is... That is crazy. Now, it says he's preparing to fuel the left tank, and I don't know if you saw... Okay, there we go. All right, there it is. Look at that. Wow, you even have the reflection, the shadow of the hoses, the lines for fueling the truck. That is amazing. Uh, over here on the passengers, uh, looks like they're about a minute away. So let's see if they're going to show up properly. I've tried the fuel truck several times already, and there was only one time where it kind of glitched on me and did something very similar to this. It actually said it was fueling, but the truck wasn't even there yet. All right, now I'm assuming that the passenger vehicle is going to be coming from about the same area that the fuel truck came from. Now, one thing you are going to notice about the ETAs that you see on the tablet here is that they are going to jump around a little bit. So as they're kind of mazing their way around the airports using the taxiways, as you can see, the ETA is jumping up and down, up and down. All right, so there he is. Uh, looks like, yeah, he's come from the same place, and he's going to take the exact same route that the fuel truck did. Today, I'm also using live weather. We're using the X Enviro weather application. Fantastic live weather application for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can't talk about it enough. A little expensive, though, so I'm just going to throw that out there. It is a little expensive. All right, so you can see the SUV just pulled up, and if we take a look outside of the SUV, we actually have some luggage. <laughs> this is so cool. Now, the luggage is also going to be changing. So every time you get new passengers, the luggage is going to change every single time. Now, I know it's going to repeat itself, but there's a bunch of different luggages <laughs> that they are using. Just like the vehicles, there's going to be several different vehicles that are going to show up to your air aircraft. Now, if we go in, we can see that the passengers are boarding. Over here on the left-hand side of the tablet, when the passengers get in, you will see that the little marker here is going to flash on us and change color and let us know that the passengers are boarding. There we go. And our last passenger is getting on board now. All right, once everybody is on board, we can shut the door. And there we go with the animation. Shocks, security cones, and the red carpet. We'll leave the uh, GPU connected for right now. So let's continue with the menus at the bottom of the tablet, and then we will get on with today's flight. The next tab over is the charts tab, and here's where we're going to be able to view all of our Navigraph charts. Now again, this does require a subscription, so just keep that in mind. We can also import our flight plan from SimBrief, so we would just click there and all of our charts for whatever 
flight plan you have loaded in a sim brief will then populate here. Now, this is not where we are right now, so just want you to understand that. But if you click on your departure, you can then go through all the different charts that are available for that airport. If you see a chart that you want or you're going to need to go and reference, you can hit the little star button or the star icon, and this will pin that chart to our chart dashboard, so to speak. So now if we go back, we can go and see our route. We also have the option to change the type of maps that we're showing. And if we go to our destination, let's just go to the arrivals and we'll click on an ILS and we will star that one. Now, again, we cannot use the mouse scroll wheel here to zoom in and zoom out. You have to use these options over here on the right. But here's one really, really cool thing about the charts in this tablet. Now, yes, you need to use the zoom in and zoom out buttons on the screen to zoom in, but you can just click and drag your chart around on the screen. Now, watch this. This is really cool. Notice the location that I have this chart on the viewer here. We're going to go back. We're going to go back to the first chart here. So all the charts that we're going to pin are going to be over here on the left hand side. Let's go back to our first chart. And now let's say we need to get this chart set up for our departure. Now that is one little glitchy thing there of it bouncing around. So I'm not sure what that is. But so let's say that this is part of the chart that we're going to need to use for our departure. Now, one of the big issues that a lot of these EFB tablets have when it comes to your Navigraph charts is that when you're zoomed in on a chart because you need a certain piece of information and you want to skip to another chart that, say, you have pinned, well, usually it's going to make that chart big again on your screen. So it's going to zoom all the way out and fit that chart to the screen. Well, not with this EFB. So if you have it zoomed in on a particular portion of that chart that you need, when you switch to your other chart, it will automatically go back to wherever you had it set when you switched off of it. To the left of that, we have our flight plan button. Here's where we can import our SimBrief flight plan. Now, just keep in mind that with SimBrief, you do not need a paid subscription to use it. So you can just go on a simbrief.com, create a free account, and set up your flight there. And then you can import that directly into the tablet, and it will show you every portion of that flight. Under the Departure tab, this will give us a lot of information about the departure airport. Again, you will need to use the scroll on the side of the EFB tablet. You cannot use your mouse scroll wheel. We have information of the arrival, runway, and airport. And it looks like we can even... No. Can you change? Yes. Wow, that is cool. So you can click over the runway, go down to the runway you want to show, and then it will populate that information up here. So it's there when you switch back. That is, that's awesome. Down in the weather tab, you can input an ICAO for whatever airport you want, and it will give us the weather for it, but it will automatically bring up our METAR for the departure and the arrival and the alternate airport. On the very last tab at the bottom is our OFP report, and this will give us the entire report from SimBrief at our fingertips. This is cool. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? All right, so the very last tab that we have is our pre-flight tab for the aircraft. And this is going to be an overview of how mechanically sound the aircraft is. So you don't actually have to go into the maintenance tab to check any of this. This will really give us a good view as to where we are with all the systems. And if you see something out of whack, then we can head over here to the maintenance tab and do what we need to do. Now what I want to do is to take everybody back to the cabin comfort tab. Now, as you can see here, now that we have all the passengers in, we have a passenger status at the top, and this will tell us whether they're thirsty, hungry, or they're hot or cold. Hungry, happy, sleepy, that's it. Now, we also have the option here to tell them, hey, you need to wear your seatbelts, 
and it will tell you how many are wearing the seatbelts, how many aren't. If you tell them to take the seatbelts off, you will notice that maybe some people may not want to take their seatbelt off, which you see here. Down here on the lower right, this is going to be all of our cabin comforts. So for your heat, your air conditioning, the fan, as you can see, it's 104 degrees inside of the aircraft. Now, one thing that I do want to show you here that is modeled, if I open the door, see, every time you open and close the door, that's going to happen. So you're, you're probably going to want to turn these off once you get into flying. But let's go back to the cabin comfort again with the door open. We should now start to see the temperature dropping because outside, I don't believe it's that hot. Yeah, it's 88 degrees outside and 104 inside the cabin. So you will start to see that drop. Another thing that we can do to help with the temperature inside the aircraft without it being running is to turn on the vent fan. Now keep in mind the vent fan is only going to be bringing in outside air. So it's only going to be as good as the air that's outside the aircraft. A lot of people might say, well, why don't you just turn on the air conditioning? You got the GPU connected. Well, in this aircraft, the air conditioning compressor runs off of a belt off of the engine. So if the engine's not running, the air conditioner will not work. Over on the left-hand side of the tablet, here's where we can actually serve coffee. We can serve snacks. We can organize the pillows that may fall down off of the benches in the back. And we can also stow the pillows as well. Yep, there you go. As you can see, the temperature is now dropping in the cabin. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and close the cabin door. All right, so now let's say we get this thing in the air and just take it for a short hop. Keep in mind, I am not going to be going through any checklists here. This is not a tutorial. All I'm doing is trying to showcase the aircraft so you can just see the level of detail and immersion that is put into it. So what we need to do is to come up top side, we're going to hit the battery, and we're also going to turn on the generators. I'm going to turn on start mode. I'm going to turn our ignition and fuel pumps on, bring up the start button switch, turn on some nav lights. So now what we have to do is to go up here and press and hold the start button. Now, if you have the action cams on, which I do, it's going to jump to the outside of the aircraft. When that happens, keep pressing in on your mouse button. Do not release it. Once your NG reaches about 15 to 20%, we are then going to introduce fuel by the condition lever over here on the right. Now, I have my condition lever mapped to my Bravo, so you're not going to see that move because there's no way I can do all this at one time. So um, just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get this thing started and take a listen to the awesome sounds. All right, we're about 15, 16 on NG, so I'm going to introduce fuel now. Now, if you see what's happening right here, we're outside the aircraft. It put us back outside with the action cam, but it's not putting us back in the cockpit. So I have to put myself back in the cockpit by using the insert button on the keyboard. So that's why some of these action cameras really can get a little bit um, problematic, I think. But I'm going to keep them on for now because I want to see if there's any other glitches in these action cams. All right, so for those of you who want to know how to operate the air conditioning system on this plane and to get the temperature down, the first thing that we want to do, one, is to make sure the bleed air is off. So the bleed air is how we're going to introduce heat to our aircraft cabin. If you have the bleed air on, you're going to be fighting a double-edged sword here because the bleed air is what bleeds off some of the heat from the engine inside of the cockpit. So we leave the bleed air off. We come over to the air conditioner. We turn the air on. 
and we're going to turn this to high for the air conditioning switch. We can now turn the vent fan off because we don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to leave the temperature gauge right up here in the middle or so. Now the climate control gauge is going to help mix your hot and cold air to get a proper temperature coming out of the vents. Now the reason why I have it set in the middle right now is because, well, I do not have the bleed air on, so I'm not bringing in any heat inside the aircraft from the bleed, and we've only got the air conditioner running. So because of that, it doesn't really matter where I have this control. So if we take a look at the temperature over here on the left, we're at 101 degrees right now. So I'm gonna turn this all the way to the hot portion right now, and let's see if the temperature still drops. Now we're just monitoring the cockpit temperature over here on the tablet. Yep, and as you can see, we dropped down to 99 degrees. Let's see if we can get it to go down one more just to confirm that, yep. All right, so there we go. So it really doesn't matter where you have this climate control on because we're only providing the climate control system with cold air from the air conditioner, it is only going to be putting out cold air inside the cockpit. Now, once we get up higher in the atmosphere and it gets colder in the atmosphere, we can then turn the bleed air on. We'll probably be able to turn the air conditioning off, and then we can just use the automatic climate control to adjust our temperature once we get up in the air. So I hope that makes sense, but again, this isn't a tutorial about it. I, just some things I picked up from the developer, and I just wanted to share that information. So the next thing we have to do is to get our avionics on. We can also turn start mode off, and we're now going to turn the ignition into auto and fuel pumps into auto. During takeoff, these should be in manual, but we're not going to worry about that for today. Now, I do want to show everyone a, another little bug that I've run into with this. Now, I do have all of my lights mapped to my Bravo, as you can see. So what I want to do now, before I take off, is we're going to turn the weather down to where it's pitch black outside. This will also give me a good opportunity so I can show you all the lights inside of the aircraft, which are amazing. Now I don't have any lights on other than the nav light, so we'll just go ahead and turn that off right now. Now what I'm going to do is turn on my pulse lights. So if I go outside, I just flick my switch for my pulse lights to turn on. And if you notice, I do not have any pulse lights showing. If you look at up here, the pulse light is turned on. Now let me turn on my taxi light. Taxi light works just fine. Landing lights work just fine. There you go, you can see the nav lights work just fine. And we have our strobe lights. So now for those of you who are on hardware and wanna figure out, well, wait a minute, how do I get the pulse light to work? What I've found is just turn the pulse light on from inside the aircraft. We'll go back outside real quick. And now if I turn it off on my Bravo, they go off. And if I turn it back on on my Bravo, they go back on. All right, so for right now, I will just turn on all my lights. We'll get the pitot heat on, stall heat on. We'll leave everything else off. Probably don't even need the pitot heat because we're at 88 degrees. Now, another thing that I do want to point out here is that this is a pressurized cabin, which I've talked about earlier. The pressurization is going to happen right here. This is how we can turn on the cabin pressure. The cabin pressure is also completely automated and it drives off of the information that it gets out of the G1000. So what we need to do to make sure that we are at proper cabin pressure when we land is to enter our landing altitude. To do that, we're gonna to go to the timer reference on the PFD portion, and then we're gonna scroll all the way down to the minimum section. We need to make sure that this is in the barometric minimum, not radio altitude, but barrow minimum. And over here, we're gonna put the minimums for the runway. 
What this will do is it will set our destination altitude for our cabin pressurization system. So now when I turn that off, you will see the bare minimum show up on the screen. But if we take a look over at the cabin pressure, you will also see that the destination elevation will be input as well. So now let's take a look at the cast messages on the PFD portion. You will see here that we are in the beta range. So here's where you will know whether you are in beta or not. And before we take off, I just want to show you what happens here um, because I'm not really going to be able to go through this while we're up in the air. Um, and that is the cabin services. Now, if you remember, uh, I put that table down in the back over there. So let's go ahead and give them some food and some drink. We're going to serve some coffee and we're going to serve some snacks. Now, if we take a look in the back now, look at that. <laughs> that is so good. That is modeled so good. That looks, you could almost eat it. And now we need to prepare the aircraft for takeoff or takeoff configuration. To do that, we're going to set our flaps down to 10 degrees. We are also going to adjust our rudder trim. Now, the rudder trim button is going to be right here, and we need to give it some right rudder trim for takeoff. You'll also notice a little cyan little arrow there, so we just need to get this over to match that arrow. Alright, that looks about good. So we've got that set. We also need to make sure that our trim is in anywhere inside the takeoff position here. So that looks good. The other thing that we can go ahead and do is turn on the cabin comfort. We're going to set this to normal. And this will now start the pressurization of the cabin. So with that, I think we are pretty much set up for takeoff. Now you don't want to be running your air conditioner when you're doing your takeoff normally, but for this demonstration, I don't care. So we're going to leave that on. Now we need to come back over to the tablet because I believe we still have our chocks on. Uh, we're going to disconnect the GPU. Yeah, we don't have our chocks. Okay. All right, everything looks good. Emergency brake, e-brake off. And we just need to give it a little bit of throttle to get the airplane moving. Okay, I'll spare everybody the taxiing. I'll bring everyone back once I am ready for takeoff. All right, so now we're ready for takeoff. Now, one thing that you really want to be careful of is that you do not over torque the aircraft. Um, this aircraft is very, very powerful. And if you full throttle this thing, it is going to over torque and you will ruin your engine. So if you're using realism, make sure you don't do that. Ooh, keep it straight, keep it straight, Johnny. About 1250 on the torque is about where you want to be. And uh, you can also set your flight level change to 125 knots. There we go, rotate. Gear is up. can turn autopilot on we're gonna set our flight level change to 125 